Hey guys, welcome to Flat Top King. Today, it's all about steakhouse dinner. It's Saturday night, the wife wanted steaks, and I'm about to unleash the best potato side dish we've ever put on the Flat Top Grill. You guys stay tuned. All right, really quick, before we get to any of that stuff right there, I have noticed that my Flat Top Grill, we're back on the Camp Chef today, has had almost like an uneven cooking surface. I don't know if it's hard to see in the video. Maybe she could shine the light or the video, but when you're, it's preheating right now, so I'm not touching it. But I have noticed that my, when I rub it down, I was getting the lint from the paper towels. I typically don't get that. So without breaking down, I had a conversation back and forth with somebody that wanted to sandblast their flat top grill. And I was like, golly, that's got like aggressive. Plus most people don't have that option. I don't even have that option. So I got uh, basically 320 sandpaper. I warmed it up, added some water, cleaned it off really good. Get as much oil off as possible. You guys can still see there's some oil on there. And then I just finally went over it and just knocked off the tops and the edges. And I'm telling you what, I cleaned it up then uh, with water again, paper towels, and then re-oiled it. Now we're just preheating it up. It is 10 times better. I'm, so I'm highly recommended this. I don't even know what the outcome is, but I know I can get it back to tip top shape in a hurry. And all this did was just basically just knock down the uneven edges and make it a little bit more smooth. All right. So let me tell you about this idea. You ready? We got our steaks here. We got asparagus, traditional steakhouse dinner, right? Well, what is probably the number one sold item with steak besides like a steamed vegetable or sauteed vegetable? Potatoes. So I didn't want to come out here and do like some crappy, you know, I'm not saying they're crappy. I shouldn't say that trying to just up my game a little bit for you guys. That's basically what I'm trying to do. So I've been recipe testing. We did it a long time ago and I said, if you guys see these potatoes on the griddle, you know that I'm up to a, a recipe testing. So now's the day. Look, I've taken these potatoes, sliced them on a mandolin, and uh, basically just had them soak in the water. We drained the water out of them. I'll see you a little bit more. Just to try to rinse the starch off of them, okay? So this is the idea. I've got my cast iron skillet preheating on the flat top grill as well. We're going to cook these potatoes. I can start doing that right now. A little bit of oil, not a lot. You don't want this too oily. And basically what you're trying to do is cook the potatoes about halfway through, okay? And start layering it with cream, cheese, and everything else. And we're going to cook it right in our cast iron pan right on the flat top grill, and then we're gonna finish it on flat top grill. I swear I've got one for you. Right now, it's probably time to start our cream sauce. So this is my idea, okay? Give or take about, I don't know, that much butter? Uh, maybe a little bit more, maybe a good tablespoon. Take about that much garlic. Remember, I'm only gonna make enough for this one dish right here, okay? We spread out a whole potato right here. This is actually a whole potato that's been sliced. And just enough cream to cover it, just like that. Just take a little bit of uh, rosemary. This is very pungent, it's very powerful, so a little goes a long ways. You can add as much or as little as you like. Some salt, we can salt it later. And some fresh cracked pep. So this right here is basically our quick sauce for the scallop potatoes. We're just gonna let that go. Let all that butter and garlic steep in the cream. Once it starts bubbling, we know that we're pretty close. As some of you know, I've been working on my uh, steak seasoning. I'm still fine tuning it. So this is just my house steak seasoning. No recipe provided because eventually we want to bottle it. We're close. It's not close enough for me. All right, remember, you're only trying to cook these potatoes about halfway. It happens very quick. I probably let them go a hair too long on one side. That's fine. We can make up the difference on the other side. Plus, when some of them tear, you can set those to the side and use those for later. You definitely want some good, nice, perfect pieces on the bottom to protect your cast iron and the sauce. Just a very, very, very slight crunch left over. That's what I'm looking for right there. I'm gonna take these off. 
because it looks like it happened just at the right perfect time. Look at this right here. Let me show you. See how we're starting to, cr uh, to boil right here? See that? Yep. That's just what I want. You guys see that black pepper in there? Taste it for seasoning. You get that rosemary right away and garlic. Absolutely perfect. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Just let that go for a second. Let's clean our flat top up and get ready. Now that our cream is done, I'm just gonna pour it right in the bowl. Just be, please be careful anytime you're taking something off your flat top that you got a hot pad, a bowl, uh, a towel, something. It gets hot just like everything else does. No really reason to uh, clean it out. We're going back to the flat top. Ah, didn't mean that. Good thing of butter right here. Let's start our process. I'm gonna turn this out up to medium. All right. Got some cheese right here. We got our cream. We got our spoon. So this is how I this is how I did it. This is one of those recipes where I've actually done it before. So at least have an idea. Butter goes down. I don't want to get those sides as well. Come in here with the potatoes that look really good. There's no holes in them. And you're just going to bring them right up the side. Now look, when I'm doing this, I don't know if I need to say it or not, but I'm sure I do. Be careful because this crap's hot. And put a good base right there, okay? Maybe one more at the bottom just for extra protection. A couple more, maybe. Just like that, okay? Now what we're gonna do is come back in here with this cheese. Layer it. Come back in here with this cream sauce. Get about half of it in there. Okay, there you go. Repeat the other step. The other half of that cream sauce. You guys can add different cheeses. You guys can add blue cheese, goat cheese, smoked Gouda, anything. Come back in a little cheese and then finish it off with that top layer. All right, so that's a whole potato right there. So this is the idea. This is gonna boil. I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna dome it. It fits perfect, see that? I'm gonna dome it and just set this to the side. It's gonna create a convection. It's gonna start boiling rapidly. The one thing I would say is you gotta be careful about the bottom. The bottom, since it is the heat and it is potato, is gonna get done faster than the top, okay? What you're traditionally used to is seeing that golden brown on top. With the flat top, there's no way to do that, but I've got a secret for you. Once that bottom gets a little bit darker than what you would like, that's the time to pull it, okay? Not burnt, a little bit darker, because it's got to cook all the way through. Once that happens, we're going to move it off, flip it over on the flat top on the new side of the potatoes, and cook it for a couple minutes to crisp up those sides, let it cool, and I'm telling you guys, you guys have got a winner to go with that steak. Just want to show you guys a quick peek just a couple minutes in. See what I'm talking about? See how we're bubbling? That's all that butter and stuff in the background or in the bottom of it. And now what happened is that heat is trying to penetrate through the potatoes and it's creating that sauce. You guys make fun of me for my spatulas. I should have rung this out for my spatula video. <laughs> See if we get a sneak peek. See if we can start talking about browning first. Okay. No browning yet. It's pretty light colored. That means we're good. We're just gonna keep letting it cook, put the dome on it, and just let that baby go. All right, I just took the dome off. I just moved it back. I'm starting to get some browning exactly the way I like it. It's been about 10 minutes to give you an idea, okay? So now what we're gonna do is start starting the steaks. Let those rest, we'll get the vegetables going. And I'll show you guys how to finish these potatoes. You obviously are going to cook your steaks to whatever temperature you like. I have noticed on these flat top grills, flip often, 
because they can, get, I'm telling you, for some reason, if you're new to cooking, you don't cook steaks a lot, it seems like they can cook in a hurry. I know you want to get the crust, but I'd much rather have medium rare than a deep crust. And what we're going to do today, what's my philosophy? I always try to teach you something. Remember we bought our meat smasher, bacon press, whatever it's called. I'm going to put it, let's just say on this steak right here for the whole time. No matter if we flip it or not, I'm just going to see if it helps out with the crust. Is it worth it to get one of those just for this reason? Because I personally would buy it if I knew that that crust was banging, right? That's just personally me, but obviously you can use it for other things. All right, potatoes are probably a hair longer than what I wanted. So what we're going to do, just, you just want to work it out. See how there's not a lot of moisture in there as much anymore? That's the potatoes absorbing all that liquid, that cream, that cheese. So find your stride, start prying it out, because you're going to flip it. You ready? Seems pretty loose. You ready? Right there on the flat grill. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh yeah. I, oh, I, I love when, oh man, I'm excited. Food just makes me happy. I like when something turns out. You guys will see it when it don't. I throw <laughs> crap everywhere. It always turns out, buddy. <laughs> we always eat it. It might not be the prettiest thing, but we always eat it. It's right. always delicious. How about that? It's time to flip the steaks. Look how big that mammer jammer is. All right, so this is the one that's had the meat press on it the whole time. We're in the sun a little. That's, well, a, that's a dang crust. That's a crust. Let this side warm up a little bit. I mean, that's a good crust too. So it doesn't seem like it made that much of a difference. They look the same. All right, with your potatoes, all you're trying to do is cook the bottom. It's cooked pretty much about 75, 85% through. Now, remember, your potatoes were cooked previously as well. So all you're trying to do is get that color on the bottom. Once this is done, I'm actually going to move it over here and keep it warm. Oh, where's our meat thing? I'm going to go on the big one to help it out some. Okay, we're done already. All right. Let's see what we got going on here. That was real time too, no editing. Yeah, you want that cream and that cheese to set up. It helps to set up the potato. I'm telling you, oh man. That came out perfect. Fresh cracked pepper, salt. We're just going to cook these until basically almost like the word al dente. We like our vegetables just the hair crisp, so we're trying not to overcook them. I told my dang wife today I was not going to do this, and she's like, well, then you're not cooking my steak. I said, yes, ma'am. Sometimes she lays the letter of the wall down. How I finish my steak, a pat of butter on each side. We like the W sauce, not a lot. And what happens is when you take that steak off, it's super hot. So while it's resting, it's literally creating its own pan juices right there. So it'll melt the butter and everything. It's the only way to do it. <laughs> she loves it. Sometimes I like it. Sometimes we do other things. All right. Oh, my goat cheese. You'll live. Start, I gotta have goat cheese You'll too. live off camera. <laughs> All right, the star of the show, I know you think it's the ribeye, but I'm so proud and happy that this came out. I do a lot of recipe testing, but look how much crispy we got. If you had this side by side with one in the oven, I just don't think you can tell the difference. And that's what I love about exploring. That's what I love about griddle cooking. No matter what brand it is, just taking it to the next level. All right, so 
my idea to layer it even more. It was like that. Mm, look at that cheese. Crispy on the bottom. I bet that's better than an oven scalloped potato. Well, <laughs> it's dang good. Look, look at all them things. Oh, oh. Ah! Party fail. We'll keep that in the video. They say I never mess up and I'll laugh at them. They have no clue. Look how many layers, with layers and cream and cheese and all that stuff. Mm. All right, guys, so this is the idea. Steakhouse dinner on the griddle. Is it as good as going to the steakhouse? You guys know how much steakhouses cost. And with the inflation on the rise, we got these bad boys for like $8.50 a pound. We could not pass them up. Let's see what we got. Plus these scalloped potatoes. Come on now. And asparagus was 87 cents a pound, which is crazy. It's a good sale. Oh yeah. Oh, to me. Perfect. It might be a hair, and I mean a hair on the rare, but I'd rather have mm -hmm. hair on the on the raw rarer side than medium rare. I think that's perfect. Well. Mm. I love my dang steak season. Oh man, that's so good. That's good. <laughs> that's damn good. All right, here we go. Something I'm extremely excited about. Going for like, this is like the middle of a hamburger. Like you only get one bite, you know? Look at all that cheese crap. I love the touch of rosemary. God, that is so, that is so dang fun. Somebody, please, for the love of God, try this and tell me how good it is. Matter of fact, and then somebody else do it exactly the same way I did it. And then somebody else say, hey, I got you. I'm gonna put a different type of cheese in it. Cause I'm telling you, if we could do this, I've got some crazy ideas down the pipeline. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to press that subscribe button, pound the notification button, share it with your friends.